have you got on your hand? What? What have you got on your head? I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. I've got this stupid thing on my head. Why? Well, well, if I wear it anywhere else, it chafes. Ah! That, that was actually a line I stole from one of my favorite movies called Real Genius. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Actually, the reason I'm wearing this stupid thing on my head is in, to introduce the fact that this week we're playing around with sound systems for the two K27 locomotives. Incidentally, if you haven't seen the, the episode on the Baldwin Radio Factory and the invention of headphones and also James B. Lansing and his speakers and so on, you really need to go watch that. That's the, a good one. The, yeah, the Baldwin Radio Factory. It's amazing. But this week we're putting the sound systems into the two K27 locomotives, the Economy 400 sound systems. And, uh, and so we, I'm just doing this to sort of introduce that into the show as a, mm -hmm. a sort of thematic way to sort of grease the, the subject uh, out there. So anyway, do check this out. We're heading over to Garage <laughs> Mahal right now to pick up the two engines and haul them over to Don's where we're going to be installing the sound systems and doing a little experimenting with speaker designs. <laughs> well, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we started on this project, the two K27s in 1 20th scale, an AccuCraft here and a Bachman. Now we're going to be installing sound systems in them. That's the new Economy 400 sound system. So we've started here by dismantling the Bachman tender to put the sound system in it. And while we're doing that, Steve is hanging a very heavy sign over our heads. At any rate, the Bachman tender is coming apart quite nicely. We're going to have to put a speaker in here as well. In the meantime, Steve is now working on the high-tech LED lighting system to light up the workbench. Don now has the Bachman tender torn to pieces, so we're moving on to the AccuCraft tender. The AccuCraft tender already has a speaker in there, but we're redesigning this whole thing. It also has a soundtrack sound system, an earlier version. We're pulling that out as well because it doesn't have motor control, DCC. What we're putting in is this, the Economy 400 sound system, which is perfect for this engine because it can handle four amps, and we're putting in a Keep Alive system, a current keeper as well. Just imagine, all of the sounds that we're going to need are pre-recorded on this little board right here. The AccuCraft model is a lot harder to tear apart because we have to pull all of these old electronics and the speaker out of here. Now the speaker was put in with no baffle system and our biggest project here is to design a baffle for both of these tenders to improve the sound. A properly designed baffle system really, really improves the sound of your model. Now while we're working on this, Steve is finishing up installation of the high-tech LED lighting system for the workbench. Turned out pretty darn cool, didn't it? It's important to be able to see what you're doing when you're working, but looking cool is always important too. Okay, over to Don's house now to work with his 3D printer and build the baffle. This is a baffle that he's designed and built for one of his ON3 models. Fits perfectly inside the tender and works with the smaller speaker. Since we're using a large 4-inch speaker in the two K27s, we've got to design a much larger baffle. And Don is designing it here in 3D CAD software. Now the reason to use a baffle is illustrated here. You can see that a speaker which is just left unenclosed allows the air pressure from the front of the speaker to wrap right around the edges of the speaker and come back in from the back. The goal is to create a sealed box to hold the speaker. 
Now in the perfect world, this box would be infinitely large, and that's called an infinite baffle. But in the real world, infinitely large doesn't really work. So you have to use a much smaller box, especially inside a train, and so we make that as airtight as possible, and that's called an acoustic suspension system. Now, in a lot of home speakers, they use a baffling system behind the speaker to help carry the pressure back out of the box, and this can sound really amazing. Sometimes they'll put the baffle in front of the speaker. This is called a bass reflex system, and it's used in a lot of car stereos and can really pack a lot of punch if you give it a lot of power. Needless to say, neither of these systems are going to fit inside of a tender or work very well for what we're trying to do. So we're going to use a small baffle. Now, you can buy a small baffle like this, much simpler than designing and building your own. But if you design and build your own, you can get the exact performance that you want out of it. And never mind, it's just way cooler to design and build your own baffle. Once the baffle is designed, it has to be created here on the 3D printer. 3D printers have found their way into the home over the last few years. They've been around for decades, and the big professional units are really amazing. But these little home units are a little bit clunky. Most of them are made by small companies who are trying to get into that market not terribly reliable in most cases, but hey, they get the job done, and that's what we're doing here. We're going to print out our baffle for the two K27s. This also gives us a chance to test different ideas because we're not entirely sure how we want the baffle to fit in there, how big it should be, and what kind of sound we'll get out of it if we change certain parameters. But it does allow us to design and build a baffle that exactly fits the tender and the speaker so that we can ensure an absolutely airtight seal with the speaker. These home printers use a plastic called PLA, which is actually made out of sugar, of all things. Now, a thin, thin wire of PLA comes down into the print head where it is melted and then squirted out onto a platter. In this case, Don's platter is heated. A heated platter gives you the advantage of the plastic not setting up too quickly, and that can cause your part to warp. Also notice that Don has put a sheet of glass on here. After a lot of experimentation, he found that if he puts a sheet of glass on there and then pours a little puddle of acetone with PLA dissolved into the acetone, it adheres really well to the glass and yet separates quite easily too, which is really important. The parts take quite a while to print, but that's okay. Turn the printer on and let it build the part overnight while you sleep. Okay, time to test the new baffle. Here's the speaker, not in the baffle. Let's put it in the baffle and hear how it sounds. The sound is much richer and louder in the baffle, and the low end is much more filled out. Notice the custom-built baffle exactly fits the speaker for an airtight seal. Just by way of experimentation, I had the idea to try hooking a piezo tweeter to the system to see if it would give us a cleaner high end. You actually can't hear any difference at all, so total failure. But we did have the idea to try a larger baffle. The baffle that we have here is working really well, but what if we build a taller baffle with a little more depth to it. Will that sound better 
or will that sound worse? So here's our new baffle with a lot more backspace, and let's give that a test. Wow, as it happens, it works much, much better. Check out the difference here. So while none of this may work for you with an HO locomotive, the moral to the story is bigger is better. And that would apply to HO as well. Well, we're ready to do the actual installation of the sound systems into the two locomotives and get that all buttoned up. And then we're going to start wiring the lights and adding details. That should be a lot of fun. You know, I still can't hear a thing with these stupid headphones on. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, I think they look cool. Oh. Do you I, think I look cool? He, he looks really cool. I think they're cool. I feel like a, a pilot or something. Like way I need out. To get some aviator sunglasses to finish the look. Oh, there's some under the end of the seat. I have to hand them to you. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, we could sure. go fly in a B-29 again. Well, let's do or that. Or a B-17. Yeah. Or a Ford Trimotor. All shows yeah. that you should go look at right. if you haven't actually seen them because mm -hmm. they're an enormous amount of fun. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, if you haven't been over to the channel, why? Get over there. Why? Because there's <laughs> all those movies, plus most importantly, the Baldwin Radio Factory, where you That's can find out everything about headphones. And James JBL speakers exactly. and television, television. And cold fusion uh -huh. and uh, sound amplification using an air compressor oh, and boy. just all kinds of interesting kinds weird of weird things <laughs> that you might not think were even possible. Right. So do check that out. And you can get over to the channel by clicking on the little blue button that's popping in just about now down here that says subscribe. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a subscriber, it will even subscribe you. That's right. If you are a subscriber already, which we know who you are, mm -hmm. God bless you all, uh, then you can watch all those other movies uh, that we just mentioned. So it's all good. Mm -hmm. Blue button popped in just a few seconds ago. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not sure how you found this fun, exciting, and informative bit of screwing around on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again next week with some more massive screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.